Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. And this is from the New Living Translation, just for a bit of variety, really. And it says this, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction. That's an interesting way to describe the Bible, isn't it? Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Last week, we, we talked about the importance of prayer, didn't we? And the fact that time in prayer is one of the fundamentals of our faith. But if we're honest, it's maybe one of the fundamentals in our faith, but how easy is it to let go of it, isn't it? Daniel prayed three times a day and saw the reality of that relationship, that time with God, saw that worked out in his life when he faced difficult situations. We should learn from that, shouldn't we? Yes? Anybody there? Anybody awake? Yes, good. But how do we know that prayer is important? I mean, when we try it, we discover it's very valuable. But how do we know that we should take time in prayer with God every day? How do we know it is a fundamental of the faith practices that we are called to observe? Well, we know because the Bible tells us that it's so, doesn't it? The injunction to pray is there in God's word. The call to prayer is there in God's word. That's how we know. Which brings us, as we've been thinking since New Year, about some of these fundamentals of our faith. It brings us to the second important element in our faith. And we touched on it last week because most people, when they have a regular quiet time with God, but they take time to pray, they start it by reading the Bible. Reading and reflecting on the truth of what God says to us. It was Daniel's practice to pray and it enabled him to cope with life. And the same is true with the Bible. The Bible, study this book of instruction continually, meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it then you will prosper, then you will succeed. I mean, it's as clear as the nose on your face, isn't it? And God is speaking to Joshua there. We'll come back to it later on. But the truth is, the Bible is essential for us if we, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, are going to live a life that is full of God. The Bible is essential. You see, there's, there's something about the human heart, the human nature we are shaped by what we take in the human heart the human spirit needs guidance and shaping and the things that we prioritize to take in they will shape us so if you are guided and shaped because you spend all your time reading the daily mail it's going to have an impact on how you live your life if you are guided and shaped by reading the guardian it's going to have an impact on your life. If you are guarded and shaped by watching TV soaps or Doctor Who, because just to be clear, Doctor Who, like Star Trek, is not a soap. It's a TV drama. It's an important distinction. <laughs> it's an important distinction in our house, I'll tell you that one of it. Anyway. But if you are shaped by watching soaps or Doctor Who or anything, or you are shaped by 
politically savvy comedians putting ideas into your head or indeed politically savvy politicians putting ideas into your head although let's be honest over the last couple of weeks it's been hard to tell the comedians from the politicians hasn't it a oh, little bit of satire a little bit of satire creeping in there yeah if we are shaped and guided by any of these things primarily the truth is then our shape may not best reflect God's shape for us it may limit our ability to move in the power and the grace and the truth of God if we allow ourselves to be shaped by the things of this world then that shape will not best communicate the heart of God to those around us or empower our lives in the heart of God so God says to Joshua meditate on, on it day and night but prior to that do not deviate from it do not turn to the left or the right obey it be shaped by it let God's word shape you because understand me here I'm not saying you can't read the Daily Mail no I'm not saying that or the Guardian or whatever I'm not saying you can't watch the soaps I'm not saying you can't watch Doctor Who but we need to recognize and prioritize what will shape us in the right way because then we'll respond to those other things properly if we are shaped by the Bible in our understanding of what God wants to say into this world then when Emmerdale or EastEnders or whatever run a storyline that butts up against the truth of what God's Word says we will respond to it in a proper way we will know the right thing to say we will know the right thing to pray we will know the right thing to do in the light of it it's scary how easily it is to be influenced by modern media isn't it and especially television and you find yourself buying into a storyline and having sympathy with characters who are doing things that are totally at odds with what the Bible says you kind of go oh sorry hang on no this is kind of not in keeping with where I should be as a follower of Jesus and and I'm not saying we can't watch the telly but I'm just saying that if we we allow it to shape us rather than God's Word to shape us that'll be reflected in our lives if we allow God's Word to shape us we will respond properly to these things because you see the Bible is not just a book of history or of wisdom or of religion it's an active spiritual tool that God uses so that we might be shaped in the right way 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 15 to 17 Paul writes to Timothy and he says this from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching for rebuking for correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work how does the servant of God become equipped for every good work it is through the Bible and it's not just through the Bible it's through knowing the Bible and Paul writes to Timothy and he says from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures his family got it right they taught Timothy the scripture and as a result he was shaped in the right way and again and again throughout the Bible again and again God calls those who would follow him to recognize the power and the truth of his word to read it to study it to embrace it to do what it says Deuteronomy 11 go, I mean Deuteronomy 11 verses 18 and 19 go take us to an interesting place fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds tie them as symbols on your hands bind them on your foreheads teach them to your children 
talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give to you, give to your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. God says to his people, take the words and the principles of my word and think about it. Remember it. Cause it to be the tone for your house. Put it on the door frame so that when people come into your house, they pass the word of God. We don't always have scriptures on display in house, houses anymore, do we? I know I've been at some of your houses. I know some of you do. But, you know, it's not. It used to be very fashionable, didn't it? You go in and you say, God is the something of this house, the unseen guest at every meal. Do you remember that one? You know? Oh, you go in and there'll be one on the wall. Prepare to meet thy God. That was always a little bit disturbing when you went to visit somebody for a cup of tea, wasn't it? Eh? <laughs> but the call of God is that we take his word and we keep it in front of us you know and we don't have to literally these days tie it to the back of our hands we don't have to inscribe it on our foreheads but he wants us to put it in our hearts to teach it to our children, to our families, to talk about it with those that we love, to make it a priority in our lives, to live in the light of it. Because Romans 15 verse 4 tells us it brings instruction and understanding. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the Scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. We were talking last night, an excellent point was made last night to me as we were chatting. And that point was that whilst it, it doesn't take away from the pain of loss to know that somebody is in heaven, the fact that the Bible tells us they are in heaven is something that is precious and something we can hold on to, isn't it? And although we may have pain at loss, to know that Cynthia is made perfect with Jesus is a comfort, is a hope. But how do we know that? Because everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide we might have hope yes and the bible brings understanding the bible brings transformation to our lives in 2 kings 23 it tells us how the word of god was found and it was read and the people took it to heart and the nation was transformed simply because they listened to the word and they took it to heart. In the story of Jonah, Jonah, when he eventually arrives via the fishing lanes, when he gets to Nineveh, he brings them the message of God. Yet 40 days, he cries. Yet 40 days and what, they say. Yet 40 days and God is going to judge you. And they go, we don't want God to judge us. We are sorry, God. Please forgive us. They take the word to heart. They are transformed and judgment is removed. God's word brings transformation. God's word removes the threat of judgment. God's word brings wisdom. Which takes us back to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Moses has died. It's a bit like the beginning of a Christmas carol, you know. Marley was dead. Yeah, Moses was dead. He had died. And Joshua was now in charge of the people. God help him. Because he'd seen what they were like under Moses. I'm not entirely sure that Joshua wanted this promotion, but he got it, whether he wanted it or not. And God's promise to Joshua 
is that he will be with him, that he will never leave him. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But to connect with that promise from God, the pathway to connect with God's promises is through the Word. It's through the Word. And we treat the Bible so glibly now when it is the gateway through which we find the power of God in our lives. It is the gateway through which we find the truth of God's wisdom for our lives. It is the gateway through which we find peace and security and hope. And the pathway to connect with the promise of God is the Bible. So, as we have considered with Samson what we maybe have let go of, and considered with Daniel the power of prayer, tonight I want to encourage you to consider with Joshua the power of God's Word. Read the Bible daily. Use Bible reading notes by all means, but read the Bible as well. Because it is not just a history book. It is a living tool that the Spirit of God can use to shape us in the right way. Read the Bible daily. When you read a portion of the Bible, ask yourself, or maybe more appropriately, ask God, what does that say? What does that mean? And what does that mean for my life? Remember our three questions of Bible study. What does it say? What does it mean? And what does that mean for my life? Read the Bible daily. Reflect on it. Meditate on it. Let it shape your soul. Let it shape your mind. You know when those thoughts come to you? You know the the voices from the shadows. They never say anything nice, do they? You know, in your head, those voices in your head, the, those, those temptations to think about ourselves. They seldom say, so, they seldom say, God, you're good looking, aren't you? They seldom say, oh, you're a wonderful chap, you. Do they? They don't say that. They say, you're a failure. You're rubbish. How could God love you? And all those negative thoughts that sometimes go through our heads, when they are happening, meditate on the Word of God that has been given that we might have hope and peace. And let it shape not only your soul, but also your mind. Let it shape the tone of your life. Let it shape the way that you relate to people and engage with people. It's amazing how people who live in the Bible, it's amazing just how gentle and loving and yet firm and true they can be, isn't it? It's amazing how when people live in the truth of the Bible, they meditate on it, they let it set the tone of their lives, how the people around them speak positively of them. Why is that? Because the Bible shapes us in the way that God wants us to be. And if you, I love this, read the Bible daily, reflect on it daily, like God said to Joshua, take that to heart. Because then he says, you will prosper. Hands up everybody who wants to prosper. Not half, not half, I've got a, I've got a roof I need to pay off. Not half, Lord, I'd like to prosper. The interesting thing about the word prosper there, when you look it up, is Sadly, it doesn't mean money. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't mean. I mean, sometimes God does prosper us with money. But actually, the word there is about being wise, prospering with wisdom. Then you will succeed in all you, you do. Oh, I'm going to be the next Alan Sugar. No. Please, God, no. But you will succeed in that you will be as God's best for you. Do you understand what I mean by that? God, you see, wants to prosper us in that we become wise, 
in how we live our lives so that we live as a light for him. He wants us to succeed, not necessarily in the eyes of the world, but in being the best that he has for us. And verse 9 of Joshua 1 says this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Read the Bible daily, friends. Reflect on it and let it shape your soul and your mind and the tone of your life. And it will make you wise. It will enable you to be the best that God has for you. And it will enable you to be courageous and strong. Whatever you face, because the Lord your God is with you. Let's daily take time to pray. Let's daily take time to meditate upon the word of God. So that we daily might shine as he wants us to. Amen? Let's pray. Take the truth of your word, Lord. Make it real in our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.